Welcome back everybody to our course Introduction to Quantum Optics. Today we want to discuss with the quantum beam splitter and in this case we want to know how the operators of the electric magnetic field for the input states are related to the output field operators uh, of this kind of beam splitter. So in general if we make a picture of uh, what we had for the classical case we had the input output relations between classical fields. How are these output fields related to the classical input fields. And now this relation between classical fields, when we replace the fields by operators, by our quantum operators for the electromagnetic field, we see that now we basically get a relation between operators, between output operators destroying photons in mode E3 and E4, how these are related to the destruction operator of photons in modes A1 and E2, and of course the same for the creation operators. So this is the quantum transformation, the quantum input-output relation that extends this classical description to the quantum case. And we can rewrite the uh, input-output relation by just replacing our fields by these kind of destruction operators. So now the output destruction operators are related to the input destruction operators through our transformation matrix and for which we determined the complex coefficients t and r in the last class. So energy conservation holds all the same, so all the derivations we had for these coefficients hold in exactly the same way. But now we have a relation between operators and not anymore between fields. So we have, for example, the destruction operator for destroying a photon in mode 3. That's related to the destruction operator for destroying a photon in mode 1 and 2 through these complex coefficients and likewise for mode 4. So now let's see uh, what we can get. So now we know, for example, what we have for A3 and A4, but what about A1 and A2? How are A1 and A2 related to A3 and A4? Well, let's calculate that quickly. Let's calculate R star of R3. That just gives us norm R squared A1 plus R star T A2 and T star A4 that gives us norm T squared A1 plus T star R of A2. And now let's sum both equations. Let's sum them and what we get is then norm R squared A1 plus norm t squared a1 plus r star t plus t star r a2 that's r star a3 plus t star a4 and now since sorry norm r squared and norm t squared they sum up to 1 this is just a1, the destruction operator for destroying a photon in mode 1. r star t plus t star r, that's 0. So now we have the relation of a1 being related to 3 and 4. Destruction operators r star a3 plus t star a4. And likewise, of course, through a similar calculation, we can get how the destruction operator in mode A2 is related to the destruction operators in the modes A3 and A4. So this is summarized here and now we would also like to know the creation operators because we also need the creation operators to calculate something in the end. So do you remember how the creation operators are related to these kind of destruction operators? Well they're of course just the adjoint operators. So A1 dagger that's just R A3 dagger plus T A4 dagger A2 dagger that's just T R3 dagger plus R A4 dagger A3 dagger that's just R star A1 dagger plus T star A2 dagger and A4 dagger that's just T star A1 dagger plus R star A2 dagger. And now we have everything we know. We know how these input creation and destruction operators 
are related to the output creation and destruction operators and now we can start to calculate something. So let's put a simple state of light onto this beam splitter. So let's put one single photon in mode 1 onto the beam splitter and see what we're going to measure on the output of this beam splitter. What are we going to see on these output ports 3 and 4? So let's write down the input state. The input state is one photon in mode 1, zero photons in mode 2, so the vacuum field in mode 2, one photon in mode 1. And uh, the output states A3 and E4 actually are also kind of zero initially, so my, my input state actually I should fully write down if I also specify the output modes 3 and 4, I should write as 1, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. Okay? So, but shorthand notation is just what we write down here on the left hand side. So we know that the state of having one photon in mode 1, that's just the creation operator in mode 1 acting on the vacuum state in mode 1. So I can express, re-express my input state in the following way. So now what is the output state going to be? Well, now we just have to relate the input states and the output state destruction operators to each other and we remember that the creation operator for creating a photon in mode A1 that's just R times creating a photon in mode 3 plus T times creating a photon in mode 4. So the output state when I look at the output state uh, that's just going to be R times a 3 dagger plus T times a 4 dagger where I've now replaced A1 with my output state and now of course I have to look at the output modes. The output modes are initially empty, 3, 4, but we've sent this light A1 dagger in and we're looking at how this transforms into the output modes. So we now have to uh, use the relation between the input and output creation operators and that basically is going to give me now R times creating a photon in mode 3, 1, 3, 0, 4, plus T times 0, 3, 1, 4. So you actually see that the state you end with is actually a superposition state of the photon being in mode 3 and the photon being in mode 4. So we actually say this is an entangled state of the photon between the different fields. Between the different field modes. And when we measure the photon, well, where are we going to find it? Well, we have a certain probability of finding it in mode 3. We can have a detector here and a detector here and when we measure the photon we can either get this state or that state. So we can either have a click where the photon appears in mode 3 or we can have a state where the photon appears in mode 4 and our detector clicks in mode 4. But what are we going to get on average? So let's basically look now what we can get on average for such a kind of entangled output state that we have in our system. So on average the output port light that comes out if we calculate the number of photons in mode 3, the average number of photons in mode 3, that's just the number operator in mode 3, that's just creation and destruction operator of creating and destroying a photon in mode 3. We evaluate that over our input state where we have one photon in the input state and if we keep here the input state then we have to use the input output relations to convert this operator which acts on the output fields into an operator which acts onto the input fields. But we know what the relation is so now we can just make use of our input output relations and we can just put in here what A3 dagger is and what A3 is. So this is like zero photons in mode 2, one photon in mode 1. Now A3 dagger, that's just R star A1 dagger plus T star A2 dagger. And we multiply this by the destruction operator A3, which is now just R times A1 plus T times A2 acting on the state 1, 1, 0, 2.
Okay, so now we've calculated what happens on the output ports by just through operators on the input state that act on the input state through our input operators, uh, through our output input relations of the fields. Okay, so now let's see what we can get. Well, for the first term here, we get norm r squared a1 dagger a1. So this one basically destroys the photon and recreates it again. And then we measure the overlap with the state of having one photon in that mode and zero photons in mode two. So that's going to give a non-zero result, but because first you destroy the photon, then you create it again, so you end up again in the state one zero. All the other operators, as you can actually see, all these other operators end up in orthogonal states to this state zero one. So the only term that remains is this first term when we multiply this out. And this, of course, just gives us norm r squared two zero one one one, one, zero, two, and that's just one. So this is just norm r squared, and that's of course just one half for the 50-50 beam splitter. The same thing for uh, N4, so the average number of photons that come out on port four, that's also one half, okay? So you see, if you repeat the measurement many, many times, you will see that half of the photons appear in mode three, half of the photons appear in mode four, and that's basically exactly what we expect intuitively from the classical result of the beam splitter. However, if we look at how these intensities, how these photons are correlated with each other that we see in modes three and four, we find a very strong non-classical result, something that no classical field state could ever produce. So if we now look at a situation where we correlate the output photons measured in port 3 with the photon number measured in port 4, when we put here photon detectors which count the number of photons, we see that's zero. And that of course makes sense because if the photon appears in mode 3, there will be zero photons in mode 4. So if this is 1, this is going to be zero. Or the other option we have for this entangled state here is that if the photon appears in mode four, then it will not appear in mode three. So that also gives us a zero result. Then this is gonna be one and this is gonna be zero. So we can never have a situation where the photon shows up in both ports. It has to show up in one of the ports after we make the measurement. And that gives us these very strong that we call non-classical correlations for this kind of entangled field state. Showing us again that this Fox state, this one photon Fox state is actually actually a very non-classical thing. If we put it on a beam splitter, we can get results that we could get with no classical fields. And that's of course due to the entangled single photon state between the field modes. So just this simple experiment of putting a single photon on a beam splitter gives us a result that no classical theory could ever predict us. All right, that's all I wanted to tell you about the quantum beam splitter. You now know everything you need to know and actually you can try for yourself and see how a coherent state transforms on a beam splitter. Let's say you put a coherent state onto the beam splitter and we write that in terms of the creation operators how does that transform into the output field? Uh, try it for yourself and see what you get. Thanks a lot for watching today. I'll see you in the next class.